Hi folks, I wanted to do a video about the difficulties that are going on uh, around us in many parts of the world right now that I think a lot of us are familiar with. Warfare, inhumanity towards each other. We find this uh, in Ukraine with Russia. We find this in, in Israel and in Palestine and as well in many other parts of the world that are less famous, that don't get on the news as much. Uh, Haiti being one example, but of course there are plenty of others. Uh, John Aaron and I uh, did a podcast recently on this topic, and I'll leave a link to that episode down below in the notes if you want to hear uh, John's take and our take together. But I thought, again, that I would do a video on the subject. So the question is how we practice with all of this. Now, there's no, not going to be any simple answer. There's not going to be any answer that covers all of us because we each come from our own place. We each have our own background. We each have our own concerns and worries. But I want to talk about a general approach that we can take, uh, particularly from a Buddhist perspective, early Buddhism, that might help us here. We want to take into account our hopes and our wishes, but also the complexities. I've often said in the past that the, the approach of, this, uh, of my channel, of, of what I'm trying to do here on YouTube, is to help us to live a wiser, kinder, and calmer lives. And I think we can take that, that approach, those approaches, to us today. So what is our appropriate response? Well, we can begin with practice. Practice is where appropriate response, I think, arises from. We can begin with patience, with the awareness that things don't change quickly, that we probably ourselves can't make change, we can't force change, it has to happen on its own. So we have to have patience. And while we have that patience, we can practice mindfulness, an awareness of where we sit right now, of what's arising in us right now. We perhaps may witness fear and uh, worry that arises. We may witness anger, even hatred. We may uh, witness sadness, deep sadness with what's going on. These are all absolutely normal kinds of human responses. Uh, in particular, the response of anger, which is one that I think is most troublesome, but nevertheless most human in us, as we become aware of the attachment that we have towards the way things are, our attachment towards parts of the world, towards individuals, towards states of peace and uh, of, of, of bounty that seem to be threatened in one respect or another. And when we see that threat, one of the things that naturally arises, one of the mind states that naturally arises, is a state of anger, of even, I would say, at times, of hatred towards one another. The dangers, perhaps, may seem to surround us everywhere, and there's always going to be people to blame. Uh, there's always going to be negative karma arising, that is to say, people involving themselves in, in destructive and harmful behavior. Uh, a behavior that has been conditioned by long, uh, deep kinds of exposure to delusions, to deep entrenched hatreds that perhaps go back hundreds if not thousands of years, to greed for power, greed for land, greed for wealth, and so on. All of these things come together to be harmful to other people around us. We can see it in the world every day. But the question is how we most wisely respond to this situation. Each of us must and will find our own way forward, but the Buddha, if we can use him as a touchstone, the Buddha was relentless in urging us to pursue peace. At the beginning of the Dhammapada, the first chapter of the Dhammapada, some of the very first lines urged peace. They say, They abused me, they hit me, they beat me, they robbed me. For those who bear such a grudge, hatred never ends. They abused me, they hit me, they beat me, they robbed me. For those who bear no such grudge, hatred has an end. For never is hatred settled by hate, it's only settled by love. This is an eternal truth. This advice of the Buddhas is a, is a hard pill to swallow for many of us, especially in these kinds of difficult, painful situations. 
but oftentimes peacemaking is actually the most brave and wise course. However, it has to be done with our eyes open. It's not something that can be done uh, uh, quickly or without wisdom. And here there's a recent uh, essay by Bhikkhu Sujato online that touches on many of these themes. I'll leave a link uh, again to that essay down below in the notes. An essay where, where Bhikkhu Sujato touches on a lot of the complexities here. Uh, he begins by uh, noting that the Buddha talks about four different kinds of karma. I'll only talk on, uh, touch on a couple of them in, in today's video, but one of them is bright actions with bright results. And this, uh, Bhikkhu Sujato says, uh, is a hallmark of the peacemakers themselves, people who are working for peace, who therefore do bright actions, that is, actions that have good karma with good karmic results. However, peacemaking itself is a hard road, and oftentimes it will seem or be that self-defense is essential. We may indeed feel in the breach that we are forced to re resort to violence in order to protect perhaps the innocent or the vulnerable. And this is a point that Bhikkhu Sujato makes as well. That is to say, the second part of the Buddha's four different types of karma are bright and dark act or dark and bright actions with dark and bright results. That is to say, people involved in somewhere in between, things that have mixed results. And those of us who are not in a situation where we're forced to make such choices are indeed privileged and should view ourselves as privileged. So the question is, though, when we're in a situation where we have to choose perhaps self-defense, perhaps violence in a terrible situation, how do we mitigate the dark results? How do we mitigate the dark karma while enhancing the bright uh, results, or enhancing the bright karma. These are, of course, always going to be difficult questions. And this is something that Sujata himself uh, points out and talks about. Here's what he had to say. The urge to think of the world as black and white, as solvable by elementary rational categories, is childish. It's how kids think around 11 or 12 before they learn the terrible lessons of growing up. The reality of life is that we're faced with impossible choices and yet we must choose. So not all of our answers are always going to be easy. What may seem a, a simple matter in the abstract may prove to be an impossible thing to get right when we actually come down to the reality of it. And yet, at the end of the day, we have to keep in mind that all of us at base desire the same things. We desire happiness. We desire health. We desire safety. We desire an ability to express ourselves openly. We desire peace. And this awareness can be a starting point for our practice of loving kindness. A wish that all people can have access to happiness, can be happy, can be healthy, can be safe, can express themselves openly. That all people can be freed from their delusions freed from their greeds and their hatreds. If that were to happen, the world would of course be a much better place. We can at least try to foster that wish within us. That can be a basic bedrock practice. We can also engage in a practice of calming meditation, of focusing on the breath, of allowing our ordinary obsessive thinking to calm down so that we can get a clearer picture on what's really going on. We can both be, become aware of the thoughts that are arising within us, we can acknowledge those thoughts for whatever they are, we can let them go, and we can come back to that patience that will be so necessary as we go forward, that's so necessary in life. So we come back to the breath, to where we are right now, and hopefully we're in a calmer, wiser, place, a kinder place, a place where we can see more clearly the route forward. And each of us, again, will have a different route forward. We're guided by our hopes and our wishes, but we should always be wise to the complexities, to the awareness that not everything is right or wrong, 
or dark or white, but there are mixtures. There are going to be impossible decisions that must be made. Now, I did an earlier video on this question of the four types of karma, and I'll leave a link to that video up here on the screen in case you haven't seen it or would like to refresh your memory about that very basic teaching of the Buddhas. Thanks so much, and we'll catch you on the next video. And meanwhile, all of you be well.